and Jason Garrett, as we talked about, he's probably his next bit to maybe Freddie Kitchens is probably the hottest seat in the NFL right now. And and clearly, uh, listening to the interview with uh, with uh, Jerry Jones, the um, uh, Cowboys owner on a radio station in Dallas, he was not happy, and uh, curse words did ensue. <laughs> So uh, we saw what happened on Thursday night. The Bears uh, uh, took advantage and, and won that game against the Cowboys, uh, 31-24. We've been talking about this a little bit earlier with Kent Sterling, KentSterling.com. Colts are on the road uh, without Adam Vinatieri, without T.Y. Hilton, without Marlon Mack, um, without Hooker. Uh, so, and and the the Buccaneers are are are. are at a good spot, they're in a good place, and Bruce Arian and his team have found a way to to um, to get to get the pieces put together. And so, we need this win. Do we have to win out? When I say we, I speak of the Colts. Um, does the Colts have to win out? No, but we sure need uh, these wins. And, and, and as Kent said from KentSterling.com. He said, you know, if we could get a, a hand, and these are all winnable games. If we could get a, a handful of wins put together and and Jacksonville and Tennessee go on a losing streak, we could put ourselves back in a better situation. But we have to get wins, and, and it's it's one, one week at a time, and we'll focus. And then we end the season on Monday night against New Orleans. Um, so – we have got to get these get these wins and, and and get in a better situation. Ravens and the Bills. Lamar Jordan and what a beast, huh? I bet you if you've got him on fantasy football, you are living life. You're enjoying life. You're enjoying your wins. <laughs> I've seen him in various leagues score as much as 30, 40 points in one game. Join us now, Mo, from the BS Sports Show. Mo, how are you, sir? Uh, well, I'm alive, so it's another good week for me. Not so much for the balanced listeners, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> hey, I understand. No problem, brother. Hey, uh, let's let's get into some of these conversations. Obviously, it's college football, uh, divisional championship weekend, if you will, some big games on tap. we got the Big Ten. First of all, we'll start with there here in Indianapolis, Ohio State versus Wisconsin. I, I, I mean, I think this will be a good game, but I think at the end, Ohio State uh, wins this. I think across the board, you got to look at Ohio State running the table. Yeah, I mean, even though I find Ohio State disgusting, uh, you know, this is probably the best team I've seen them have in, in years. But, you know, don't forget it wasn't too long ago that, uh, that uh, you know, Wisconsin just laid down for the Buckeyes in the Big Ten Championship, which propelled them into the uh, college football playoff and won them a national championship. I don't think the Buckeyes uh, – I don't think they're going to have any trouble with the Wisconsin, honestly. Because here's the thing, and, and Michigan learned this and Penn State learned this, you can hang early, but if you don't keep scoring and you have to start kicking field goals, Ohio State will run you into the ground because they don't kick field goals, man. They score touchdowns. So you've got to be able to keep up with their scoring, and no team so far has been able to do that. Now, they haven't played a team with a defense like an SEC team, like an LSU uh, or, or an Alabama yet, but you know, right now in, in the Big Ten, you've got to keep scoring to keep up with these teams. And so you've got to hope that the, your offense is on point today if you're Wisconsin. We were talking with Tony Donahue of the Tony D podcast earlier about uh, the LSU Georgia game. And if you're a college football fan, there's a part of you that likes chaos and disorder. And if Georgia can find a way to beat LSU today, um, uh, that's going to give you, that's going to feed that appetite for you. Yeah. I, you know, I don't think LSU drops out though. They lose today to Georgia. Honestly, I think they probably would take the fourth seed. Uh, you know, the, Utah blew their chance last night uh, by losing to Oregon. Oregon's not going to make it. Oklahoma's really the only team, I think, with an outside shot. But I think if LSU loses today, I, I think that they, they, they're they going to see two SEC teams in there, and you're not going to see Alabama. So I think LSU stays in the college football playoff, even with the loss today. Well, and a lot of people uh, are subscribing to the theory that uh, on the college football national championship will be LSU versus Ohio State. I think that's pretty much a universal thought. So is that, do, you, do you subscribe to that? Yeah, and I'll tell you, I would sign up for it right now. If I could, if you would tell me that that's what it was going to be, I, I wouldn't care if you played another game this year other than that one. The only thing I hate is the amount of time it takes to get 
from uh, the championship Saturday today all the way to the college football playoff. I think it's too long. I think, uh, you know, I think it loses some of its hype, honestly, for the entire long wait. Yeah, we'll get excited again when the game's a couple days out, but I think it's honestly it's too long, uh, you know, of a wait between now and then. But I would sign up right now for LSU Ohio State all day, every day. Well, we'll see what happens uh, tomorrow. It's uh, Bowl Selection Sunday. Excited to to see what happens with my Indiana Hoosiers. I was just talking with Kent Sterling uh, of KentSterling.com. You know, he thinks it would be an insult to send the Hoosiers uh, north uh, to New York or Detroit, for that matter. Uh, But, uh, you know, me and Tony, we're talking about possibly the Music City Bowl, the Red Box Bowl. Uh, But uh, what do you think that Indiana University football for the first time in uh, since 1993, I believe, has won eight consecutive uh, – have have been – not eight consecutive games, I'm sorry, have been able to win eight games. Uh, where did they head? Yeah, you know, I, I think Music City Bowl is, is a good one for IU at this point. And they showed yesterday by the humongous contract that they gave to Tom Allen that they're serious mm-hmm. about football, too. It's not just a basketball school. So, uh, you know, good for Tom Allen and good for this program. You know, he's, uh, he's, he's done a masterful job. And, you know, you talk about a team – and the Big Ten that doesn't get the the five star, the four star, you know, recruits, they just don't get those guys. So I, I think with some stability there, and with Tom Allen being there, Bloomington is such a fun, uh, uh, fun college town. It, it, I think it helps the IU program that uh, you take this guy, and and who by all accounts, everybody who's played for him loves. I mean, what a fiery, fun guy to play for. So, I uh, you know maybe Tom Allen can sneak in and a couple of those four star guys, maybe keep some of the the really good in state guys now in state like the basketball program has done. So. Uh, you know, good for the Hoosiers and good for this football program. Yeah, and speaking of basketball, I mean, heck, IU basketball getting off in the weeds here, but IU basketball has Wisconsin. They haven't been able to beat uh, Wisconsin on the road on the Big Ten opener since 1998, uh, and that goes back to the Bobby Knight days. So uh, we'll see see what happens there with, with the basketball program and follow them along as, as we go. Talking about coaches, uh, Penn State got, got uh, coach got a uh, six-year extension, but one of the things that I think a lot of people were watching, tell me what your thoughts about this, uh, uh, rumor has it that Lane Kiffin is very close to a deal with uh, Mississippi state i mean old miss i'm sorry my fault yeah with old miss yeah it looks like that's where he's going to wind up and you know this is the time of year when if you're a coach who's had a pretty good year it's time to start uh, having your agent work for that extension because you you say hey look i've got these sec teams that are interested in my guy you better lock him up for a long time and we all know that these contracts don't mean crap at the end of the day i mean they honestly don't because you know the boosters from these other schools you really want these coaches are willing to pay it to get these coaches there but franklin got uh Got the, his extension, Mike Leach, uh, Washington State got his. So we will see. But, uh, you know, there's uh, going to be some big-time programs going to be looking for coaches, and it's time this time of year to lock your coaches up. Well, and here's the other thing. Uh, the NFL is going to be looking for some coaches, too. And as we saw uh, on Thursday night, uh, the, the Chicago Bears uh, pulled out a very good win against the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Jerry Jones was not happy on a radio interview. You may have saw that. He lost his junk. Uh, and uh, I think uh, it, it's all but a certain done deal. Uh, I would think that he would wait to the end of the season. But I think after that loss to Chicago, that was the nail in the coffin for Jason Garrett. Yeah, and, and it should have been for a long time now, but, you know, it's uh, you're squandering good football teams and, and, a, and a team that, uh, uh, you know, has going to have some salary cap issues. With They don't have their quarterback under contract. They don't have their top wide receiver under contract. Uh, you know, and it, it, Urban Meyer, it seems like all of a sudden has turned into the John Gurdon of three years ago where every we, we attach Urban Meyer to every opening there is about. So I'll be happy when all these coaches get hired. I can stop hearing Urban Meyer's name every week. Yeah, I remember that we were on a uh, uh, Gruden watch every week, weren't we? That was uh, <laughs> oh god. He's finally he's finally at the radio show. Uh, kitchens one and done. I, I I don't see how he's not. I mean, it, it seems like that football team is so undisciplined. Uh, him himself, I think, is undisciplined. He's just some guys are made to be head coaches, and, and I think he's one of them. He was better as an offensive coordinator. Uh, he had some success, and, and, and they tried to keep that going with him and Baker this year by naming him the head coach. And I, I don't think he, he just turned out not to be head coach material. I think he's overwhelmed. And I think if the Browns are smart, <clears throat> they will move on. But, you know, sometimes the GM, I think, looks at, man, we've been such a, a mess with the coaching changes so often that they they hold on to a coach too long. But if I was, uh, if I was the Haslam's or John Dorsey, I would definitely be uh, making a change to a more experienced coach 
I'm really shocked, uh, you know, that uh, Mike McCarthy wasn't interviewed for the job. I thought that that would be the job, honestly, that Bruce Arians would get, would be the Cleveland job. So if I'm uh, – I'm John Dorsey. I'm looking for a guy with head coaching experience that's not Jeff Fisher and going to come in there and, and, you know, put the hammer down a little bit and get this team uh, focused and back, uh, you know, on the winning track. They've got a good team. Now they just need somebody to put it all together. Uh, The bearded man with a pencil up in Detroit, uh, Matt Patricia, is obviously one of those guys that was a better coordinator than a coach. Is he on the hot seat? He should be, but he might get a chance to hang on because of the injuries at quarterback. You know, they're playing with their third-string quarterback. And David Blau, honestly, played really good last week, in my opinion, on Thanksgiving. I enjoyed watching the former uh, Purdue quarterback play. He will have uh, cleats this Sunday honoring the late Tyler Trent uh, from Purdue. And, uh, you know, it it would be terrible. This You know, this organization has not been run great for a long time. It would be a terrible idea to retain him as coach, but the injuries at quarterback might buy him one more season. You know, you look at uh, – they replaced Jim Caldwell, who had nine wins and got him to the playoffs, but that wasn't good enough. They replaced it with Matt Patricia, who doesn't have nine wins, uh, barely has nine wins in two years, I think. So, uh, just a mess uh, in Detroit. Likely, we, he will be the quarterback one more time. Well, we know Ron Riviera got fired, and they fired him early to get started on that that hunt. Uh, uh, who are some of the uh, team uh, coaches that the Panthers are looking for to be his replacement? You know, it, it's interesting because the, the owner, David Tepper, is the guy who made the decision to get let go of Ron Rivera. He wants his own coach uh, in there. And, you know, I'm, I I would think like a Mike McCarthy would be a guy he would look at. He's a huge football fan. And, you know, if I'm Atlanta, who's, I, I think, going to fire their coach, uh, I would be looking at Ron Rivera because you bring in a guy who's well-respected around the league, not a nicer guy around the league. And then you're also looking uh, at a guy who knows every team in that division pretty darn well. So don't be shocked if you see Ron Rivera wind up with the uh, with the Atlanta Falcons. But uh, I would think David Tepper would talk to uh, a couple of guys that uh, – that have had run, you know, I, I would say Mike McCarthy's probably on the top of that list. But then you really, then you got to figure out what do you do with Cam Newton. So and th- this is going to be a domino effect uh, of what happens here because I don't think they found their replacement at quarterback. But if you're not going to be drafting high enough, what do you do? So it's going to be very interesting to watch the Panthers situation uh, because David Tepper, the owner, wants to be more involved. And as we all know, once the owner gets more involved, things start to go to crap. Well, you and I talked about offline about uh, Cam Newton, and we believe he's gone from Carolina. Now, where he ends up at, a lot of people are talking about Chicago or Denver, and uh, maybe not Indianapolis because I don't know that they want to pay that kind of money, and uh, Cam Newton doesn't want to be a backup quarterback, and um, I don't think that they're ready to move the Colts, at least yet, aren't ready to move on past their long-term relationship uh, with Jacoby Brissett. So, uh, where do you think Cam Newton ends up? Because I think we all will agree that he will not be in Carolina next year. <laughs> you know, I thought Chicago, and it's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, Mitch Trubisky looked terrible up until the last two games. And now he looks like the Mitch Trubisky that we saw, you know, at times last year. The kid's got skills. I just don't know if his brain processes the game fast enough. You know, we've seen that before. We've seen lots of guys have skills whose brains just couldn't process what was going on in front of them quick enough. You know, Johnny Manziel comes to mind very quickly as a guy uh, like that. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Cam Newton. Chicago seemed like the obvious place before, and he had said he wouldn't mind playing in Chicago. Uh, John Elway makes all kinds of terrible quarterback decisions. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't be shocked to see Cam Newton go there. Uh you know, and, and he's another guy. John Elway could be on the hot seat. You know, he's a guy who's had terrible luck with quarterbacks other than Peyton Manning. And, uh, you know, those don't just fall the sky every day. Uh, you know, and Cam's uh, going to make a lot of money, and his health would be a, a huge issue to me. He's going to have surgery again. Uh, you know, and it's not just the, the foot or the toe that would bother me at this point. We saw with Andrew Luck, recovering from shoulder surgery on your throwing arm when you're a quarterback, not the easiest thing in the world to do. So, uh, Cam will be somewhere because he's a superstar, but he will never be in Indianapolis because, A, the Colts don't pay that kind of money for free agents, and, B, they wouldn't do it with this history. Uh, the Colts' quarterback situation, I think, has to change by next year. Not saying that Jacoby Brissett uh, won't be the starter, but you can't go into the season next year with the quarterback situation as it stands right now because we saw when Brissett wasn't playing uh, how terrible things were for the Colts. The Colts have to add, obviously, I think some veteran weapons uh, around him. Uh, their wide receiver position, they re-signed Jack Doyle to a three-year contract, which was good. Eric Ebron's as good as gone. 
So there's a lot of issues when it comes to quarterback, but Cam Newton, I don't think lands 